Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a, another exciting Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide race featuring our Warring Triad event. We are currently on week four of six weeks of the prelims. And today we have a showing from Group D, that is our legend group, between Cyclor of Team Phoenix and Apostle Morpheus of Team Bahamut. I am joined in the commentary booth today by Scar Server. Scar, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Gar? Oh, I am doing wonderful. Uh, this match is going to be a very exciting one to watch for a number of reasons. So Cyclor, uh, again, he's on Team Phoenix. Team Phoenix is one and two. Possumorpheus is on Team Bahamut, who is two and one. So uh, Team Phoenix, a little bit under the gun here. They are underneath the cutoff. However, Phoenix already has a win on the board with JS Numbers defeating, defeating Ceiling Cat earlier in the week. So they already have a victory here. So if Cyclor manages to clinch it out against Possumorpheus, they are going to go to two and two, uh, and that will tie the teams up. If Possum takes the win here, uh, then it is going to have to go to the tiebreaker match between Javanator and Golden Shocker, and that will be an exciting one to watch regardless. So, a lot on the line here. So, promises to be an exciting match. Plus, it's the Doom's Rage flag set, which is always amazing. Uh, Scar, sir, can you tell us a little bit more about Doom's Rage? Uh, Doom's Rage is a very punchy flag set. Everyone gets minus 10 magic power and plus 20 vigor. Um, and all of the sort of dead key item, dead check rewards are melee oriented. Yes, uh, tons and tons of delicious weapons. Pardon me, uh, lots and lots of delicious weapons to swing about. Um, you also start with plus 20 vigor and minus 10 magic. Uh, is this not? Doom's Rage? It is not Doom's Rage. Uh, this I is apologize. This is, Fury. Uh, this is yeah. Poltergeist Fury. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm looking at the Javanator Golden Shocker uh, uh, race. That's my bad. Poltergeist Fury. Tell us a little bit more about that one. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, the big thing I remember is that we've got um, economizers in the <laughs> item pool. Uh, you get can you go to the Coliseum and win a Coliseum match? Get a spear and dragoon boots and dragon horn from the dragoon objective. Get a, I believe, auto haste and auto safe from the from defeating dragons. Yes. It's three and four for uh, haste and safe, respectively, right? Uh, so yeah, it'll be it'll be four dragons for both, um, haste and safe. You were correct on that, uh, and yeah, the Poltergeist Fury flag set is based all around relics. So Scar, you mentioned the Economizer relic earlier, uh, but you can also get things like Genji gloves and offerings, which could potentially be a very spicy play for our runners here. Uh, and more importantly, the Y remove flag is on, which allows you to go out of logic in some spots and do checks that you might not otherwise have access to, which is potentially a very powerful way to get some early power. Uh, one of the most notable uses of that is at the beginning of the seed, where you can go into World of Ruin Narsh and break open the Narsh weapon shop to have a peek at what the old man wants to give you. Could either be an Esper and an item or just two high tier items. Yeah, getting a Esper or an XP egg right away is massive. 100%. And I would be very surprised if neither of our runners took an early dive into World of Ruin uh narsh for specifically that reason the allure of the egg is way too strong to resist but as you mentioned scar you also get a dragoon set for winning a coliseum match so guaranteed offense in this flag set uh for at least one member of your party so even in the worst case scenario you can always be jumping 
And it looks like we are off here. We have a Saban, Gogo, and Shadow start. Uh, X Magic and Control are the abilities. Not too fantastic to start with. Uh, you would normally love to see some kind of uh, early offense there. So uh, throw, Magitech. I believe that Shock is enabled for this flag set, which would be a phenomenal pickup. Yeah, speaking of early offense, um, did you catch what Cyclor peaked in the uh, airship shop? Uh, I did not. Well, what was in there? Uh, an Illumina for a little under 65 grand. So I think that's wow. our early offense, is find money for that. Uh, uh, hopefully both of our runners end up checking that, because that would be a little sad to miss out on. That's a that's a really big shop for Cyclor, and the thing is, is that there isn't much incentive to check the shop unless you have a gal and you're having difficulty finding dried meat. So Cyclor seeing that Illumina is huge. Plus, uh, if he goes in here, it looks like he might be able. Uh, it, like, it, it looks like he might pick up the Genji glove that's going to be in this pot. What? That is that is nuts to me. The the best weapon I've ever seen on the airship was an Apple weapon, which was fantastic. But uh, Illumina, I think, has got it beat out. Uh, there's a Megalixter there in the uh, uh, the treasure house. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see too much else. Uh, but a Mega uh, 41k, I saw like 17k in a pot or uh, in the clock. So lots of early money here for Cyclor. Like you said, all of that's just going to get funneled into buying Illuminas. For Possum, that's a lot more up in the air. Looks like both of our runners here are going to go into Returner's Camp. Very popular looting spot. It's got a handful of chests in here. There is this one annoying guard, which likes to get in the way. An egg in a chest? It must be Christmas. Uh, it looks like Possum went out of his way to wire remove that particular NPC. He's having <laughs> none of that. Oh, that's funny. Uh, th yeah, this seed has everything that you could want. Uh, and honestly, that just gives the lead even more to Cyclor at this point. So unless Possum checks that airship shop, uh, yeah, like he, he's going to be behind from the gun, I think. And uh, unless he finds Illuminas elsewhere, which is always a possibility, you can buy Illuminas in shops in this flag set. So it's entirely possible that a common shop will sell them, in which case Cyclor's... Uh, lead i'll put it to you that way uh his lead kind of evaporates and they're back on equal footing but i think if i'm cyclor i i extend my looting by quite a bit just because i want to buy at least two illuminas i didn't see who was able to equip them though uh so we, we started with, what, Shadow, Save, and Go-Go, and none of them can naturally equip it. So we're basically relying on a 33% chance that one of them can. So maybe the lead isn't as big as I thought. However, there is a great chance that uh, we find a character that is able to use Illumina. How many characters can equip the uh, Illumina in the vanilla game? So naturally, it's... Four. It's Terra, Celeste, Locke, and Edgar. And in this flag set, you need to find seven characters. And so, of, like, of the four remaining characters that our, our runners have to find, there's a decent chance that at least one of them is one of the four that I mentioned uh, earlier. And then again, there's always the chance that uh, uh, one of these characters can use the uh, Illumina, even though they're not normally supposed to be able to. Surprised that neither of them actually went and got the free check at uh, uh, 
Shadow's house, but I'm assuming that that's going to be coming. How about a hero ring in a pot there for Cyclor? Possum probably going to be picking that up pretty soon too, but my goodness, this seed just has everything you could ever want. Yeah, there are runners will uh, not be wanting for much. <laughs> Illumin is on the airship. An offering right there? What in the world? This is this is what I love about uh, Worlds Collide. There's no like waiting to the loot. You can find anything anywhere, and so you really want to open boxes till you find something. And there is no shortage of things to find. My goodness. So now Cyclor has some really interesting questions to answer. Like, do I sell that offering and and buy uh, 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 an Illumina? Do I sell that Economizer and buy an Illumina, knowing that I have easy access to the Curse Shield? A gauntlet? What? Like, I, I could gu gush over just how incredibly generous the seed is being, but I think everybody knows. And it looks like Cyclor is selling the Economizer. A little bit of a gamble that you don't find good magic early. Okay, and it does look like nobody can equip the Illumina yet. So, for now, Possum is safe. However, the instant that Cyclor finds... Terra, Locke, Edgar, Celeste. Uh, he's going to be in the lead, and he's going to be in the lead in a pretty dramatic way. In the meantime, uh, Possum going over to uh, World of Balance and going to check the Thief. Uh, presumably, he still needs to buy... Uh, there's some dried meat. Still going to need some warp stones, uh, maybe sleeping bags, and all the other uh, consumables that you like to buy at the start. Uh, 20,000 bucks is a good number. Uh, this guy can be anywhere from 1 to 65k. So, below the median seems pretty good. And there is a merit is... award. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just about to point that out, is that there's a merit awards for sale, and... Did Cyclor buy one? Or did he just sell enough to afford a Carbuncle there? Um, I, I, I didn't see him buy one. Uh, it's, it, like, if he's anything like me, then I, I kind of just gloss over Merit Award. I just assume that I'm going to sell it and never use it. But it does actually have some merit here, uh, allowing a character to equip, uh, basically anything. Uh, there are some restrictions from the vanilla game. Uh, for example, I don't think Merit Award allows you to equip a snow muffler, but I might be wrong about that. But could have used that here to uh, put on that Illumina. And Possum checks the shop! Sees the Illumina! Unbelievable! We have ourselves a race, folks. This is going to be fantastic. Oh, anyway, and he made sure to check uh, if anyone could use it. He also sells the economizer and the offering. And the offering, yeah, nah, I, I get it. Yeah, the, uh, using the offering doesn't work with it doesn't vibe well with the uh, Illumina, doesn't it? No, it does not. So what the offering will do is uh, it turns fight into X fight. You attack four random targets at half damage. Uh, and normally, that is totally fine. However, uh, with the Illumina, Illumina has the MP crit property, which consumes MP to deal double the damage. So, uh, it's basically, you end up as a, at a wash. Uh, and the other thing, too, is that the only the last hit of, uh, of Offering can proc a spell effect. So, the fourth hit of Offering with an Illumina can do Pearl, but none of the other three can. And it looks like Possum did not gloss over the Mare Award, going back into Zen to buy one after getting his Illumina. Very, very heads up play there. So, uh, EXP Egg, Merit Award, uh, uh, Illumina, Ice Shield, Red Jacket, Shadow, uh, yep. And uh, Cyclor found something interesting in the Colosseum. 
Hero Ring trading for the Valiant Knife. That is, I think, a little too spicy. I think that uh, I wouldn't make that trade because Hero Ring is just way too good. But a Valiant Knife with that offering is just phenomenal. So we're 10 minutes in and, you know, our runner's cups runneth over. How about a Hyper Wrist for, uh, for Fixed Dice? A Magicite for Fixed Dice. Uh, but the Intanger is way more trouble than it's worth. It also just takes the reset. That's fair. Um, Cyclor attempted to get that uh, Valiant Knife. It was, I think, a Power Demon. He saw that Shadow did uh, 40 damage with his starting <laughs> knife and decided uh, that it was time to do something else. So now he's in the Imperial camp. A dueler. Oh, good. So this is also uh, like a, a very rough encounter. And I believe that Possum is still on uh, level three. So Gunnar will have to rely a little bit on the evasive properties of the Illumina to, to kind of keep him safe. Well, the Illumina is the second best shield in the game, right? Oh, 100%. Uh, meanwhile, Cyclor at the Imperial camp uh, finds some pretty decent encounters here. These wizards actually have uh, a chance to drop, I believe it's a fire rod. But without a great way to kill them, um, opts to just reset. They also have a pretty decent uh, EXP rate, so uh, a little unfortunate here that he's going to have to reset out of uh, both of these encounters, and then hope that the third one's a little better. Looks like the uh, uh, the lance from the Dragoon set was a pearl lance this go around, so second best lance in the game. Uh, it's a little troublesome sometimes. There's a lot of enemies that absorb the pearl element, so i um, going to hope that Saban can use the uh, the Aura Lance or maybe even the Partisan later on. But for now, uh, it'll work just fine. Uh, and then those were drops, I think, for Cyclor. So unfortunately, Warpstoning out of all of those encounters finds a Sortex Strago, which is also huge. With the levels that you get from this flag set, Sortex 7 can come online uh, in virtually every seed. And Sword Tech 7 is amazing. So lots and lots and lots of offense here. Oh, and possibly going for the monster in a box because he uh, did sell his other offering. They're up. Yeah, so has that fixed dice in hand. Um, gonna, gonna hope for another offering. I would have liked to have seen him do this check after uh, uh, doing all the checks here and getting his levels because level three is uh, spooky, but uh, just a master pug uh, makes him say, uh, "Crack the warp stone, and get out of there." An interceptor being a good boy, getting possum through that. That's I love. That's that's. That's why Shadow's my favorite character, honestly. He's got a good boy. I don't know if Interceptor's like the best dog ever, uh, but he's up there, right? Like of all the video game dogs. Certainly my favorite. I'm I'm partial to Dog Beat from Fallout 4. Okay, so uh, Cyclor taking a uh, a fixed ghost encounter here finds the six deep eye formation, which. Uh, is certainly doable, uh, but this fight kind of sucks because these guys like to put you to sleep. Uh, and Possum, meanwhile, uh, having a much easier time getting through the Wizard Psychot encounter. Uh, and somebody chat pointing out uh, uh, Angelo, uh, which is Renoa's dog from Final Fantasy VIII, also a good boy. Now, who am I kidding? All video game dogs are good boys. Even the ones that are trying to kill you. Yeah, they're just, you know, they're just defending themselves. Usually. Usually. Sometimes. Uh, 
I didn't manage to see. I don't know if Cyclor uh, got through that uh, deep eye formation. It looks like he did not, so... Yeah, unfortunately going to lose uh, a little bit of time here, uh, and more importantly, not going to get the levels that he really needs in order to, to take on this boss here, so... I still don't believe that any of our runners have actually gone and picked up Shadow's free check yet, which is a little surprising. Well, the scaling is based off of checks completed, right? It is. However, uh, both of our runners here, uh, well, uh, Possum more than, than Cyclor, but eventually both of them are going to get going. And once they get going, it's going to be... Uh, like, power overwhelming. Speaking of power overwhelming, how about a throw mug? With the bolt edges right there to, to load them up. Un, un, unreal. Where, where are these seeds when I try to do uh, a poltergeist flag? I don't know, but this is... Uh... This is definitely a seed that would have me sweating already at the 16 minute mark. I'd be scared. <laughs> right? And, yeah, any any seed that has like the hyper offense like this is it's just terrifying because you know that the other runner is also gonna have the same hyper offense. So it's who can slug it out faster. But finding that Mog early gonna pay dividends for Possum here. Uh, throw is uh, probably the single best command in the game. And uh, Mog's ability to just uh, uh, clear out groups of enemies with uh, bolt, what is essentially a Bolt 2 uh, that is very, very, very fast and doesn't cost MP is, it, it cannot be understated. Cyclor's still trying to get through this deep eye fight, but uh, there he's taking a ride on the Dreamland Express. It looks like. Yeah, hopefully the uh, hopefully the boss at the end of Phantom Train isn't uh, isn't spooky in case the XP from here is less than optimal before he gets it. It looks like Nikea has the goods too. Possum found shurikens and earrings there. Earrings, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but earrings and atlas armlets have been just very difficult to come by for these seeds. And uh, like here is no exception. Normally runners won't check uh, Nikea because there isn't a whole lot of reason to go there, but Sure enough, there it is. And hey, how about Katana Soul? That's nice to find when you haven't uh, scaled excessively. The the only thing that worries me a little bit here is that Possum, I don't believe, saved. So he kind of has to dodge um, some, some particularly rude encounter or uh, abilities. Uh, at this level, you've got like flash rain and uh, uh, acid rain, other like devastating multi-target attacks to worry about. So, but he's uh, through with nothing, uh, nothing lost. Yeah, uh, doing the little victory dance there. I like it. So now. Uh, Shadow uh, uh, could potentially pivot and do uh, fixed ice offering strats, but 
probably going to say no to that, at least for the moment, uh, and immediately proves me a liar. Uh, neat. Thank you very much for that, Possum. I mean, with that merit award, anyone can be your Illumina user. That is true. Um, I, I kind of wonder... Uh, I kind of wonder what, what Possum's play here is. Like, is he going to make... Uh, okay, so it looks like he's going to make Strago the jumper. And then have Sabin... Uh, 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 start using the Illumina. Okay. Sort of, uh, spreading the love and spreading the power to make sure you're, you can get through everything early, right? I think that's the play. Um, and I don't hate it. I don't know if I would have done something similar in his shoes. I think I would have just kept things as they are, but... Um, this does kind of balance out the offense a little bit on his side. I don't hate it. Uh, meanwhile, Cyclor uh, finds the leader on the train. Uh, the leader is vulnerable to instant death, and he got instant death. Looks like that might have been off of the uh, Esper Cyclor found on the Phantom Train. Probably explains why he took extra fights to get that Doom early in case of this. Exactly. Yeah, not a bad play. Able to get through those deep eyes finally. So uh, now just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Gonna take a dive off of Baron Falls. This is good. It's gonna give him a full party heal. Unfortunately, uh, Possum, I think, now just has way more offense than Cyclor with that Throwmog, with that Merit Award uh, Sabin. Uh, Cyclor finding the Flame Eater. Uh, I don't know what kind of offense that he has for it. Uh, other than literally the fight command. Yeah, the... Uh, this has been kind of a mean boss in this flag set. Which it usually isn't, because you don't have the not fire elemental spells. Exactly, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the rest of Cyclor's offense can't really compensate for that either. Uh, he doesn't have the ability to equip the Illumina. He doesn't have that offering fixed dice combo that Possum has. So, uh, just resorted to slugging it out here. I think if I were in his position, I would consider resetting and. Uh, trying something else. So Possum here doing Kefka at Narch. We know it's not a character, it is just an imp sprite, but there are some fixed encounters here, and I'll be curious to see if he uh, runs into one, like right off the rip. Uh, finds a speed esper that's going to be good for uh, Strago, if Strago is going to continue to be a jumper. That's exactly where it goes. Mm -hmm. And yep, runs face first into uh, a fight. Finds Brontor Evil Oscar. A very EXP rich fight. Uh, shouldn't be able, or excuse me, should be able to take this down no problems. So I think if I'm Possum, I might just farm this uh, for a little bit here. Yeah, you see 5k experience there. 24 minutes into the seed, that is phenomenal experience, especially for the time invested. Looks like Cycler got a Shiva out of Baron Falls. Wonder where he'll go next. Uh, he still hasn't gone... Okay, now he's listening to me, so uh, he's going to go pick up his Thromog, and I I think that's going to lead him into Narsh. Uh, and Cyclor's probably going to be kicking himself a little bit once he sees uh, what this Mog is capable of, so... Uh, I think... 
what would be interesting to me after this is if Possum opts to go and do Floating Continent after this, it's a, a, a long check, but it's got two pieces of guaranteed progression. Uh, it's one It's one of the ones where if you can get it out of the way early, uh, it is much better for you to do so. Uh, it's the first and last check of Floating Continent that are either characters or espers, right? That is correct. And then the second check can either be uh, an esper or an item. So... Uh, I think Possum has had enough. He's going to heal up his party. Uh, and then maybe just wait for the rest of these uh, uh, enemies to pass before going for the boss. Oh, nope. And that's... looks like it was also Cure 3 off of that uh, Palador there. Starting yeah, I think I saw Cure 2 and Cure 3, uh, which is kind of wild. But Rando's gonna Rando, I suppose. Uh, look at these just nasty rolls on, on Possum's side. Uh, this is why Fixed Ice is not preferred offense. Looks like uh, Cycler's going for a rematch in the Coliseum. Maybe going to go back for that. Uh, Valiant Knife, do you think? That would be my guess. Uh, did he did he sell that offering, or does he still have it in his inventory? Because it's either the Valiant Knife, or it's going to be uh, uh, the Fixed Dice. Oh, did he equip the Hero Ring? And he's just going for something else to get the check. Or get the Dragoon objective. Yeah, and that makes sense, too, with Mog. Um, although, in this particular scenario, I wouldn't worry about it, because Mog has throw, and that's uh, that's better than jump. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe somebody else can jump, and it would be better. So, uh, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, Possum, unfortunately, getting a little caught by these encounters. Uh, this one he'll be able to run away from, which is good. And just number 128. Uh, shouldn't have any difficulty with this whatsoever. Uh, it can be a little scary uh, because there are three parts and they can cast some pretty nasty stuff. But compared to uh, uh, Inferno, which is his big brother, it's not an issue at all. And uh, I think these fixed dice have just kind of ruined them. Yeah, fixed dice not consistent, but when they hit, they hit. Oh, 100%. Shadow really fixing those dice. Uh, and I did not see what Psych War wound up getting uh, from that antidote. Ooh, and just a mega out of the uh, uh, check there. Not horrible. Uh, I, I do like to have one, but... Really would have liked that to be progression or uh, maybe a Genji glove or something like that. Uh, so uh, no characters here for Possum uh, out of Mog's checks. So uh, going to be doing this, hoping for an Esper. Cyclor, meanwhile, going to go to Ebbets Rock, looks like. Uh, here you must acquire 22 pieces of Coral. Usually one it. piece at a time. Yeah. Uh, it's possible to do this uh, very, very, very quickly if you get, uh, uh, you know, four fivers and then a two. But as uh, far as I know, that's only happened once that, that I remember. Uh, this Power Demon Exo Ray fight is also fantastic. If you don't have the offense here, all of these are undead, so you can use your revivifies and your phoenix downs to kill them. Or you just roll the bones.
And yeah, chat pointing out that uh, nobody has done any wire removing. Uh, I know, having watched Possum do some practice, he he normally sits on uh, World of Ruin South Figaro for a bit. Uh, he he may wire remove into it at the end if he needs an Esper, but uh, until then he won't uh, he won't do anything with that. So. Uh, finds Kafka in the cave, so Possum gonna win the seed here uh, pretty soon. We're gonna look at about like 30-35 here for a, a victory. Uh, oh no, he got away. Ah, he got away. Alright, well. Darn. Do I have to chase him up the tower after all? That really sucks. Uh, he has a chance to not run away, uh, and you kill him, and then the seed's over. Uh, and everything that I just said was a lie. It looks like Coral Collection didn't take Cyclor too long. I'm gonna see the boss here. Retainers? Ugh. I get a Rager. <laughs> yeah, uh, Retainer. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, if you remember the Retainer fight from the original game, uh, he came with a pair of Lobos. Well, we thought that the Lobos were too easy, so uh, we gave Marshall a couple of other. Uh, things that he could have with them, one of which is uh, uh, the retainer enemy. Retainers are cool because when they die, they cast trade-off. And trade-off is an instant death move. So, uh, hope you block it. And Possum, after not finding the character there, decides to go to Floating Continent, uh, thinks that it is his best choice for finding a character, and personally, I agree. I love the Floating Continent, though that's because everyone else hates it. Oh, I absolutely love the Floating Continent. Uh, I I don't know if, if it's my favorite check in the game. I, I might like Magitek Factory a little bit more, but you get uh, uh, the chance for a ton of experience here. Uh, and two pieces of guaranteed progression. Uh, and then a Scullion. Uh, that is a very, very EXP-dense enemy. Cyclor finding the Alexander Esper there in the cave. So that's going to put him uh, up on the Esper count for the time being. And nearly 10,000 experience from one enemy. And that's what you want to see. So Possum definitely has the level advantage. And because of how the scaling works in Worlds Collide, the level advantage is very often the damage advantage as well. So Possum going to be able to get through these encounters a lot more smoothly than Cyclor is. The nice thing. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, it's nice thing that the runners have diverged a little bit. They were kind of in lockstep for that looting phase, and now they've decided that uh, different checks are better for them than others. Yeah, uh, Cyclor taking a peek at the uh, cave on the belt. Now, if, if he finds a character here and there is no character on... Uh, on Floating Continent, then that's potentially very big for Cyclor. Um, especially if it winds up being something like Terra, who can naturally equip the Illumina. Uh, we've already seen Terra. When Possum went up through Narsh, oh, she was hanging right. out She's in, in the, the cave. Uh, cave, yeah. Just okay. an Esper here. Just an cave Esper. In the belt. Also, shoutouts to a French Vanilla Air Force there. Normally, uh, it is this encounter that is the Air Force, but uh, uh, here it's just uh, Ifrit Shiva. So, uh, once again, shouldn't be any issues taking this down. Uh, offering fixed dice kind of solves a lot of problems, especially in the early game, and especially when you roll uh, fives. Uh, oh, well, stop, stop, he's already dead. There's no kill like overkill. <laughs> um, 
And then Cyclone coming up on the Tunnel Armor, another easy boss. Uh, this is probably my favorite, just because it is guaranteed to drop an Elixir. And there's Realm! Ah, uh, Realm. Best With Shock! And 48 magic power. <laughs> oh my gosh! Who do, like, who do you get rid of? I so I think it's got to be Shadow at this point, right? Because Sabin or or nobody. Oh my goodness! Like you know your seed is good when you have to put away a forty-eight magic power shock realm because your other party members are just better. Yeah, possum probably thinking that. He's already invested in the characters in his party and wants to keep, you know, a bit of a maybe sunk cost fallacy going on. Maybe, um, but I, I, I kind of get it too, though, right? Because offering fixed oh, yeah. you can take that to the end of the game. There's nothing wrong. Well, I don't blame him in the slightest. This is this is probably a decision I'd also make. Like, uh. Yeah, I would. I, yeah, I, I think I would have to think about it. And ultimately, I think I would come to the same decision that Possum did. Uh, shock is good, but it's it's hard to put away fixed ice. Also, World of Ruin Thamasa, um, Cycler has looted two endgame knives. He found a Gradius and a Stunner. Who's throwing away all these knives in Thamasa? That, I mean, there, there must be a killer afoot. A shadowy figure, one might say. And Atma weapons for sale? That's nice. Uh, yeah, so... Again, like, if Possum finds the Atma weapon, and if Shadow can use the Atma weapon, that's probably a better choice. Uh, and, you know, I, I bet he would feel a lot better about keeping the... Uh, uh, keeping the, the, the fixed ice shadow, you know? But, again, like, there's just, there's so much going on with this seed. It's it's hard to say, like, what, what will people pick? Is that the first pearl proc we've seen this game? Probably. <laughs> One in four can sometimes feel like a one in four hundred. Yeah. Okay, so Cyclor doing uh, Casa del Fuego, the burning house. In in this flag set, I actually really like this play. Uh, uh, like levels are so big in in Worlds Collide, and if you find a good encounter like this Buffalax Delta Bug, uh, that could potentially skyrocket you pretty high up there. Now, uh, it's a shame that Possum also found good fixed encounters uh, early on. These naughties aren't good encounters, right? They only give magic points. Uh, these naughties are are awful. Uh, They're yeah, they, they they only get naughty. Even. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so fifty magic points, not the worst. Um, but you, you kind of want something else. Uh, you, you, you want more of these Buffalax Delta Bugs, which uh, I guess don't give as much experience as I thought. It was uh, only about 3k. Was that uh, Life 3 that was just learned? On no, Cyclops you need to get away! Oh, oh, he's, oh he jumped! It doesn't. It didn't target the jumped user, right? It, no, it it sure doesn't. Uh, so Strago is gonna have to hang out for a little bit. He does dodge all of the nasty stuff that the level magics are doing, but uh... and now he's put to sleep, and uh, now he just has to hope that. Uh... Okay, the break the break is good as long as it connects. Good. Well, I'm sure that's something we won't see Possum doing again. 
<laughs> you take that as another lesson learned. Smoke bombs do, in fact, miss the uh, the jump target. Now, oh my gosh, this is rude. You can wire move this, right? You 100% can. Fortunately, the level five do misses, and this is where that uh, the the quad fixed ice comes in handy. And look at those rolls. We're, I, I think we're going to see shot. lots of <laughs> ones and twos and KT. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the unfortunate thing, too, is that you are biased against uh, the fives and sixes. Uh, one for, uh, you're much more likely to see, so. Yeah. Oh, just an Esper. No. Oh, there's Realm for progression. Yeah, so we have Realm now. Uh, she opens up two relatively quick checks. And it looks like his first destination is going to be World of Ruin Jador. Gonna go check out... Excuse me, gonna go check out Alzer's Mansion. Uh, he's also really close to Mount Zozo, uh, which he can Y remove into. Uh, and So we'll see if he does that. I think that would be an interesting play from him at this point. So uh, does see that there are Glowing Stones available. So can potentially purchase his last Esper if he so desires. He can also fail to purchase several imp robots if uh, fortune doesn't favor him. That's true. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, rando's gonna rando. Yeah, they say a probability has no ran enemy, or has no memory, but the randomizer certainly does. Yeah. I'll be curious to see if Possum takes one of these chest encounters here. Uh, the, the the contents of the chests down here are not randomized from the vanilla game. Uh, unfortunately, they are all wrong. They are different than what their contents say they are. So, uh, And then meanwhile, Cyclor finds the Guardian here in the Burning House. Can be rude. Uh, fortunately, has a has throw does not have bolt edges i think he bought some water edges though right so uh he is weak to water and bolt oh i didn't know he was weak to water too most of the machine type enemies are weak to water uh, there's there's like one exception and i can't remember what it is off the top of my head but it's a weird one uh possum... sounds like it won't come up often uh not usually no uh, Possum runs away from the Anemone encounter. And then Anemones are really messed up because if you damage them, they just uh, uh, heal themselves back up with Bolt. And then uh, runs away from the Sea Flowers and finds Piranhas. Uh, I guess that's appropriate. Uh, although, I'm not sure how these Piranhas are living out of the water. Oh, there's a character from uh, Burning House. Oh, that's very big. Uh, let's see who it is. Oh, it's Celeste! Celeste! Oh, wow, that's so huge for Cyclor because she's one of the people that can equip that Illumina. Unfortunately, there's no way that her ability is actually like useful, but it doesn't matter. She's, she can swing a big sword. Uh, would natural jump still be useful, even though we have... Um... The, drag the Dragoon Boots and Dragonhorn? Now, so Natural Jump is interesting uh, because it allows you to open up that second Relic slot for like a Gauntlet, or if you don't get haste, the Running Shoes are actually really good for jumpers. So that would be interesting, and I would consider taking her, but I, I think ultimately you just want her to swing the Illumina, and uh, sure enough, uh, Cyclor's earlier purchase paying off. Uh, so he didn't get the, he didn't get that uh, merit award. Uh, so so yeah, now now that Illumina can get to swinging, and unfortunately Possum just finds more Mega Elixir. And 
And cheap snow mufflers. Okay. Uh, and someone in chat bring up Sketch Ultima for Final Kefka. Illumina with procs would outdamage that, right? It would. Uh, however, sketching, ulti uh, sketching Ultima off of Final Kefka is the most swag maneuver. And so uh, I kind of don't hate that either. The problem with Sketch is that sometimes, like, uh, so Sketch has a 75% chance to do one move and 25% chance to do the other. The 75% chance is uh, Ultima. The 25% chance is Havoc Wing. So you want the Ultima, you don't want the Havoc Wing. Can Final Kefka counter moves that are sketched onto him? He sure can. Uh, he can, and he does. I, this is the tracker. Just a real quick update. Possum Morpheus is on 10 checks. Cyclor is on 8, about to be 9 if he does this uh, South Figaro check. Oh, and uh, finds a Thunder Shield there, too. That's uh, phenomenal. Uh, finds Invis Edges, too. Uh, and I don't know about you, Scar, but I I always forget about, like, the Invis Edges and the the Shadow Edges. If I've it's not... never purchased either of those in my life. <laughs> so the Invis Edge uh, casts the Vanish status on you. The... Uh, the Shadow Edge casts the Image status on you. Both of them are extremely handy. Uh, the problem is that they don't do damage. And so, if it's not named Water Edge, Fire Skeen, or Bolt Edge, uh, I kind of don't pay attention to it. So, uh, And hey, uh, get your Yeti emotes out in chat. And it's uh, an eight character eight characters skip this seed, right? So if uh, Cyclor feels the need to go to the Yeti's cave, he'll get the skip. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cyclor has not done any of Mog's checks, so um, gonna see that Terra up there, and uh, will probably do... Uh, like, if he doesn't go do it right now, I imagine that he will go do it uh, later on. Uh, and Possum Morpheus, unfortunately, just lost the race. Uh, you hate to see it. Uh, he did not pet the dog. Um, and that that really stinks because he like he's such a terrific runner. Yeah, it's the most important speed tech in the game. <laughs> How else is Interceptor supposed to know that he's a good boy? So, uh, takes a look at the Atma weapon there. It looks like it was uh, Sabin and um, Sabin and Strago who could use that. So, uh, one of those characters I would think to give that to. Yeah. <laughs> and Possum is uh, getting the weapon shop check. Okay, fine. Show the goat. Uh, now, does he continue up? I don't know if I would, uh, and he doesn't. With the uh, with a higher number of encounters for the curse shield, that's kind of a right away or never deal, isn't it? Yeah, um, I personally have come to the conclusion that um, with the with the uh, unlock or with the, the with the decurse the way that it is right now, it's just too many encounters. I think even with the uh, the the ribbon to block all of those bad status effects, it just takes too long. So I, I, I've taken to just ignoring it entirely, and certainly in Possum's position where you're uh, you're looking for a character in three espers, and then you're out of here uh, a little bit too late there too. So. Uh, and Realm's check is also not a character, so... Possum now has to make some really 
uh, interesting decisions here. Uh, there are a number of checks that he still has access to. Uh, uh, well, we know for a fact that Burning House is on the table. It's got uh, the Celeste in there. And uh, Celeste leads to Umaro, and Umaro leads to whomever. Uh, it's Terra. Uh, so... But he also has some other uh, checks on the table. Uh, most notably, I think, is uh, he's still got Collapsing House to do. He hasn't checked that yet. He's also got... Uh, what is it? Mount Colts? Mount Colts is on the table. Uh, Fanatic Tower's on the table. Although, maybe less so with this particular party. Yeah, I haven't seen very good uh, offensive magic uh, in either party yet. I thought maybe I saw a Fire 3 on an Esper somewhere, but uh, I could be I could be out of my mind right now. Uh, and synchronized us. How about that? Atma goes down. Chatter Nook goes down. Both of those uh, fantastic uh, bosses to, to get out of the way. Cyclor getting another glowing stone. Possum getting a glowing stone. Okay, and yeah, Possum opting to go and do cults. It's not a lot... Uh, there's not a lot of runners that actually do this check like this, uh, and I, I kind of don't know why. It's relatively quick. It's just some walking. Uh, it takes you about a minute and a half or so to get there. Uh, Cyclor, meanwhile, finds a flame shield in the chest, so uh, I believe has the, the trifecta, the flame, the ice, and the thunder shield. And now is going to get their Terra. So uh, one of the things that's kind of scaring me at this point is that neither of our runners have seen any particularly scary boss. We saw the Chatter Nook there, um, but we haven't seen Hide nor Hair. Uh, well, I, I take that back. Possum seen Doom Gaze. Uh, but um, uh, uh, Magi Master is still looming large. At this rate, he'll be at the guardian spot. Don't uh, don't don't curse the runners like that. I want him to actually finish. Like this siege is beautiful. Well, they've got offering fixed ice. They can get through that. Uh, does Cyclor have the fixed ice? I know the possum does. Oh, um, I didn't think about. <laughs> on, <it's> got... <laughs> I forgot that he doesn't have that. He does have. What does Cyclor have for? Hopefully Cycler gets uh, Berserk. I believe he's got Shurikens. Shurikens are good. Okay. Uh, finds another Esper there. Um, so it looks like all of our progression is going to be uh, uh, through that burning house. Looks like uh, Cycler considered that lore Terra for a hot second and ultimately decided against her. So uh, I don't blame him, that's fair. They, that's uh, uh once again the the seed yeah the, the their cups runneth over as far as offense but I think both of our owners are reasonably happy with what they've already got. Uh, Possum opted to reset there out of the uh, Crusader Esper. Uh, I I I don't hate that. Uh, I I think if I were in his shoes, I would just do it. But uh, well, he still has collapsing house. Yeah, that's the other thing too. That there's a lot of faster checks that he has access to. Um, Fanatic's Tower is not one of them, but you can peek it. Uh, it is not a character, so it is not required. Uh, 
Cyclor, meanwhile, is going to go and take a look at uh, the the collapsing house. And Possum going to go... Oh, is he just going to go straight to Burning House? Phenomenal. We know this is the correct play, and I, I, I'm also kind of wondering if in... Uh, well, never mind. I was going to ask... He probably realized um, that he has freer checks to do. Yeah. Little, little does he know. And there he is, uh, going to Zen for the Collapsing House, hot on the heels of Cyclor. Okay, but he sets out of that too. He wants a character and he wants it now. Uh, someone in chat is bringing up Out of Logic Mount Zozo. Can you uh, grab the Rama check without Terra in the party? No. Move? However, you can go into uh, Mount Zozo uh, by wire moving into the mountain proper. Um, and you can get the uh, whatever is remaining there. You can also wire move into Edgar checks if you if you wanted to. So uh, once again, Possum actually stepping into the Casa del Fuego this time uh, is going to be rewarded. So now it's just a question of can he. Can he dodge a lot of these encounters? And Naughty is is very rude. You cannot run away from them. Uh, you have to kill them. You will take your 15 magic power. You will like it. Or you won't be able to get magic points. Because... So, yeah, if all your characters have... Uh, like, if there is nowhere for magic points to go on your characters, you just won't get them. Which is an optimization. If, if you want to optimize that far into this randomizer, uh, I don't think anybody's interested in that. Oh my gosh! That was the sickest hallway I have seen in a long time. Yeah, that's... That's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. He probably hates to see this Guardian here, but he's got to be feeling really good about getting all those skips. And look at these dice rolls, too! Possum just continuing. Okay, well, maybe that last one was kind of bad, but still. And, and Cyclor uh, appears to be listening to us, has Wyra moved into uh, Mount Zozo, and is going to go and... Uh, do the dragon, presumably, and get the check. So this puts Possum in go mode, right? Because he knows where another Esper is. Yes. Uh, the, the interesting thing on Possum's side is that he should also know where Terra is, so does he go and get the skip? Well, if he goes to Celis's cell, he'll get the skip because he'll just get Umaro, and that'll be his eighth character. Oh, that's he went true, and grabbed true. Realm from the floating continent. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, he has a number of of Esper checks that he can just go and get. He knows that Auction House is, is live. He knows that uh, he can go and do Phantom Train and get the Esper there. There's a lot of real possibilities on the table for Possum. Would have liked to see him take uh, Celeste over uh, over Saban there, just to uh, free up that relic slot. But well, that's kind of a matter of investment, right? A possum's been gaining quite a few levels with uh, members on the back burner, so his average level hasn't been going up as quickly. Yeah, uh, it it does. Um, it does scale based on your average level of your party, so uh, I, I didn't see what level the Celeste was.
But yeah, Possum gonna go. Uh, he's gonna get a skip here. Uh, we'll see where he goes from here. Uh, he, he, there's a lot of interesting possibilities on the table for him. There's just a gem box at the top of Mount Zozo. A lot of walk for just a dragon. Yeah, uh, really unfortunate for Cyclor. Um, and okay, so he's gonna. I'm assuming that he's going to go and take a look at uh, uh, Magitek. Both Magitek 1 and 2 can only be either Esper or Item. So, uh, a decent shot that he picks up uh, uh, at, at least one. And it looks like he's going to go and buy more Offering. Or, excuse me, more, uh, more Illumina. Yeah. And chat pointing out, I feel bad for that lady receiving letters from a gym box, not even a real person. First, I, I, would, mean, be I would be thrilled to receive a letter from a gym box. I would want to meet that gym box. He's smarter than me. He's smarter than Cyan, too. I'd rather give letters from the <laughs> gym box than Cyan. <laughs> Science impersonating her dead boyfriend, and that gem box is just, you know, he's trying to have a pen pal. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of questions you've got to answer. Like, how is the gem box physically able to write the letters? How was the gem box able to think? But I want to ask the gem box itself. Did Possum just sell two Mega Elixirs to shore up his funds for, um, uh, this auction house? Uh, yep, sure did. And uh, I I don't hate it. Um, so this is a, a, a green cherry, a, a $50,000 $50, organic hand-picked green cherry, the finest green cherry in the land. But there is a practical use for buying that, and it's that uh, now the $20,000 and $10,000 items are more likely to show up and the $20,000 item is what we are interested in because that is the Esper. And look at that. It's Bahamut. And it's Bahamut. That's that's our magic offense. <laughs> we've, we've got, we've got multi-summon on. Multi-summon is enabled for this flag set. I would be very surprised if Possumorpheus winds up multi-casting Bahamut. No, uh, Possum has played a lot of uh, the Final Fantasy IV randomizer, where Bahamut is a lot better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's well. The thing is, is that it does it does real damage in six, uh, provided that you've got at least a little bit of magic power and some earrings. The problem is that the cast time is just atrocious. It's really yeah, bad. It takes like six years, right? Approximately it's something like that. Yeah. You'll be old and gray by the time it finishes casting. But your enemies will be dead. <laughs> eh, Hopefully. They'll take a few thousand damage, or that they'll be dead. So, Possum gets a, a relatively quick uh, Esper, having to buy only the $50,000 item. Uh, and uh, going to shore up his levels here a little bit. Um... I'm trying to think of his offense and if he's capable of just jamming the skip without uh, uh, like clearing up the middle. And I think that he is. Uh, Cyclor, meanwhile, in Magitek 1, finds Rexel, gets a Pearl proc on him, which is a little unfortunate. So you're... I only healed him for 1700. <laughs> yeah. Celeste is... Uh, she, she's got two uh, Illuminas equipped. Um, ain't, ain't nothing gonna last long. Uh, like that white dragon. Uh, which did not last long. I'm not even sure if it did anything. I don't know, I didn't see it do anything. I, th I think it just died to dice. Uh, and <laughs> he gets one of his hey, Mega Elixirs back. back. Easy. Calculated, even. He knows what he's doing. 
Uh, okay, so it looks like he's actually going to go back and uh, possibly buy another... Uh, yeah, he <laughs> he's going to buy another Illumina uh, for, for the Saban. Uh, unfortunately, Cyclor Celeste is a little bit better than Possum's... Uh, and he sells uh, awesome it. Statement. He, yeah, yeah. It, look, if you need, if you need a little bit of money, uh, but now it's like what? Okay, yeah. So he's gonna sell that pearl lance and pick up another Illumina. Too easy. So I'll be interested to see how Possum divvies up his party, because like with uh, with Sword Tech Seven, which I think is on the table, uh, with and with Fixed Ice and with Throw, uh, he he has appropriate damage for every lane. Oh, check who can use the Fixed Ice to divvy up and Fixed Ice multiple lanes, maybe. Yeah, so it looks like just Shadow and Realm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and it looks like Cyclor has finished up his prep and he got stray from Magitek 1, giving him Final Kafka access. He's taking the skip. Yeah, so both of our runners taking very different paths through the seed and yet going into the tower at almost exactly the same time. Yeah, uh, Possum realizing that uh, he's going to have a little bit of a, a tough time here. Because um, uh, there, there is no really great way to uh, equip a, uh, a Moogle Charm on somebody when uh, you've got a... You, you have, you're like, your relic spots are all tied up. Got dueling Umarus, and no Umarus in the tower, unfortunately. My feelings on the Yeti are public, and they are overall not pleasant. Okay, wow. Uh, so, Cyclor getting into the Umaru counter uh, before Possum, but Possum getting through before Cyclor, just a little bit, but little advantages, especially this close to the end of the sea, they're really going to add up. And uh, after seeing the absolute damage that uh, that double Illumina Saban was doing, he figured out who was uh, taking off a relic for Moogle Charm there. Yeah, a little unfortunate that you've got to do like the Moogle Charm Shuffle here, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, finds Goddess. This is actually really awkward because of Pearl, and because you're jumping with a Pearl Lance, and both of them decided to proc. Unbelievable! How unlucky. And there's the awesome love token. Extra Pearl Lance? So, uh... He did. Oh, he, this is unfortunate. Yeah, so, uh... What Possum could do here is Sortec 4, uh, which, because Goddess has very, very low physical defense, will actually do respectable damage. Unfortunately, Possum isn't quite level 44 yet. I think he'll, I think he'll get it after this fight. Oh, but he could just take the offering off of, um, he's just going to offering fixed ice. 
Uh, unfortunately, Realm and Shadow are in the same party. He still has the Merit Award. Oh, that's true. It's a Merit Award offering, then, for the, uh... Yep, there you go. Okay, easy money. And the Meteo Merit Award. from Goddess. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, you, you don't. You can't sketch goddess. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't work the way you want it to, which is unfortunate. Oh, is there just not an ability to sketch off a goddess? Uh, I, I there might be, but normally it's gonna be some kind of like bolt attack, which will just heal her. Uh, alternatively, uh. Like, so her, I think her 75% is a melee swing, uh, which uh, will proc love token. Or, well, can proc love token, I guess. Oh, good night, Strago. And good night, Dice Luck. Yeah, and uh, what what happened to these dice? Uh, good enough, I suppose, but... I guess they just knew what they were supposed to do. What? Yeah. That's Goner from, that... <laughs> from Goddess? It sure is. And Gogo -Go lives on 8 HP, yo! Seven more than he needed. Uh, this big guard... Do shell as well? Yes, big guard is safe and shell to the whole party. That was a clutch miss there. Uh... And down goes Goddess. Wow. That 8 HP. By the skin of his teeth. Okay, so that's one statue down for both of our runners. Possum pivoting over to Mog, uh, who will be uh, the, the big damage dealer for whatever this boss winds up being. And hey! There's the spicy chicken. Get your spicy chicken emotes out in chat if you got them. Big, big, big damage. Here we go. You love to see it. Oh, Cyclor did bring Umaru into the tower. It's going to be wonderful. So really good rolls there by Possum. If this next set is, is as good, then uh, you'll die here. Uh, Mog should survive this Merton. But we need we need the big juicy rolls, and uh, looks like we're getting a little bit of juice. And it's just enough. Fantastic. Poltergeist going down for Postum as Cyclor enters. Is Poltergeist weak to water, or is he just uh, neutral to it? Uh, I believe that it is just a neutral uh, thing. He is weak to poison. So, uh, unfortunately, Cyclor, I think, going to have a little bit of a harder time here. And it might take longer, too, because you can't stop Umaro from doing Yeti things. So it's entirely possible that uh, Umaro just procs uh, some kind of counter that takes forever, and Poltergeist has no shortage of long, long animation things. So, uh, okay, well, the Merton kills it. Though it looks like his Mog has a flame shield on, so he should be able to at least survive. Yeah, the flame shield for Mog is huge because uh, while Poltergeist does have some. Uh, thunder spells. Uh, normally, it's all like Flare Star, Merton, Fire Three, things of that nature. Uh, 
I didn't know Poltergeist got some uh, thunder spells. Is that because of his vanilla pool? Hey, I'm trying to remember his vanilla script. Um, I I want to say that he cast bolt three, but I might be wrong about that. Oh, nope. Uh, it is, in fact, just a wave cannon. And his wave cannon is a, uh, a trigger once he gets attacked eight times. And Lucky Cycler here getting the Merton. Why didn't he heal off the Merton there? Is it not a flame shield heal zone? It, it might be an ice shield then that he's a, he's got equipped. So uh, opts to use an X potion to heal himself back up. Uh, hard to blame him here. Uh, Poltergeist has a number of nasty things that he can do. Uh, we saw uh, Goddess cast Goner earlier. Uh, how about an Ultima? That'll do it. That's unfortunate. Uh, that is very unfortunate. Uh, and, and meanwhile, Possum is done with all of his statues. He has uh, just the tears remaining. And if you look at his level, it's 43, 45. Normally, uh, in our Ultras League flag sets, you are a good 10 levels lower. So just lots and lots of uh, of of great things that are going to be happening here momentarily. Uh, Possum does realize that he has to wake up Celeste to steal her equipment. And Cyclor gearing up for uh, a second try at the uh, uh, at the Poltergeist may also opt to just go ahead and do Doom. Looks like that yeah. is in fact the play. Looks like Cyclor got uh, Sword Tech 7 at least. Yeah, so using Sword Tech 6 there, uh, only did about a, a couple a couple grand. Um, Sword Tech 7 will definitely do a lot more. I wonder if that was just like a misclick or something. Because sometimes, like, you'll think it'll be on the 7 and then uh, it, it's, it's actually not. So, yeah. Uh, a little better here, about 6k. He might have also just been testing the water, seeing if the damage was worthwhile, because the star animation is a little shorter than Quadra Slice. A little bit, yeah. Uh, possum first on the uh, on the switches, by the way, uh, about 117.55 or so. So put your guesses in chat. How long is Possum going to take? to defeat all the tears in Final Kefka. I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say about 9 minutes and 20 seconds. I'll undercut you there and say 9 minutes and 19 seconds. Oh my gosh. Price is art rules. So, uh, phase one here, uh, it's got three parts. It's got the head, it's got that long arm, and it's got the short arm. 
That long arm is vulnerable to instant death. That's why you saw Possum casting X zone there. Unfortunately, uh, no must, no fuss. It gets down uh, 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 right off the rip. Uh, the head, if you leave it for last, um, it will use a death counter of Quake, which will do about 2,500 damage to your party. Uh, potentially very deadly. Uh, we just don't want to see that happen. So, going to kill the, the long arm, going to kill the head, and then we're going to kill that short arm. That's the one that's mauled up into a fist there. Short arm is very punchy. Uh, it likes to counter everything you do to it. And uh, its counterattacks are very, very painful. So, uh, looks like, oh, that was not it. So these two swings should do it. It's a very clean uh, phase one. Uh, and on to tier two. Uh, Scar, do you uh, want to explain a little bit about tier two? Yeah, there's four enemies here in tier two. The handsome guy in the back left is magic. The lady in the middle is tools. The blue guy is stop, right? And then there's the tiger head. Uh, the blue guy's name is hit. Hit. Uh, you can cast stop on hit. It's probably yes. what I was remembering. You can, and he's got a bunch of annoying attacks. Is he the one that throws out hone tusk? Turn your enemy, turn your party into zombies. Uh, no, that is Tiger. Uh, Tiger will use Doom Tusk to turn you into a zombie. And then Tools is vulnerable to Doom and Odin, but not Break, right? That is correct. And you can and should mute Magic in the back, because he'll cast a bunch of annoying spells. Um, Tiger's weak to ice damage, right? That is, yep. That is correct. And Hit is actually weak to... Uh, poison damage. That I did not know. More you know. Yeah, it doesn't really come up. Uh, and you know, maybe maybe one seed out of a hundred uh, casting bio on him is uh, is the move to make. Uh, also, funnily enough, he is vulnerable to berserk. Oh, and Cyclor, unfortunately, uh, taking another reset here. Uh, this Poltergeist, Poltergeist, uh, and I don't know about you, Scarcerer, but this is easily the boss out of all three of our Warring Triad flag sets that gives me the most trouble, and it does not matter. Uh, it, it does not matter which one you do. He is always a pain, uh, unless you have stop. Yeah, the only time um, I have anything remotely resembling a good time with Poltergeist is in Doom's Rage where we have the auto-reflect and he'll occasionally open with a stop cast and stop himself for a bit. Yeah, and then normally you can just you know, chunk him down that way, but my god, if you don't have stop and if you don't have a way to get stop onto him, yeah, you can have a, a pretty rough time. I, th I think Possum's luck has dried up with the, the fixed dice there. Uh, absolutely nothing happening. Cyclor uh, re-gearing his party, gonna take uh, a third stab at it. I would love to see him utilize the save glitch here. I basically just save right in front of uh, of the statue, and that way, if he wipes again, well, he just has to take a couple steps, and then he's right back into it. But uh, um, decides that he is fine as it is. And Possum, meanwhile, gets done with tier two on to tier three. This one is uh, a little bit simpler in terms of mechanics. You've got two targets there. You've got the floating girl head. Her name is Lady. And then you've got uh, the dude who's kind of relaxing. His name is Rest. 
Girl has a uh, quad nine HP, absorbs every element, and uses Pearl Wind uh, to heal the party back up. So you want to kill her first, especially because if you let uh, Rest die first, uh, she will cast Life 2 on him, and he will come back with all 40,000 of his HP. Rest, once he gets below 30,000 H... Or, excuse me, once he gets below 10,000 HP, once you've dealt 30,000 points of damage to him, he will cast Medio and Train, both of which are very devastating spells. Uh, and so hopefully we're not going to see it, but it is entirely probable that we will. Uh, and on his deathbed, once you kill him, he will cast a move called Calmness, which is an instant death move. Uh, it is physical... Which is why you see Possumorpheus summoning uh, the Fenrir Esper there to set the image status on his party. But if that hits you, you're dead. There's that Meteo coming out. Uh, that means that he is very close to death. That Meteo comes out when he's got less than 10,000 hit points, right? That is correct. Uh, so, yep, uh, the two Illumina swings there uh, were enough to knock him over. He did one Calmness, which missed, and uh, Possum is on to final Kefka, uh, the man, the myth, the god himself. And down goes the spicy chicken for Cyclor. Very nicely done. And all there is to show for it is a dead Yeti, which is good. Yeah, that, that way when he uh, gets dragged into a final Kefka gone eight ways to Sunday, he doesn't do anything in it. Because yeah. you do not get a full heal before final Kefka. Uh, he, he is notorious for making fights go sideways. Uh, and speaking of going sideways, final Kefka, uh, any number of ways that this fight can go sideways too. Uh, so, um, he likes to open with... Uh, fallen one, sets your HP to one. If you do enough damage to him, and I always forget exactly how much it is, I want to say it's like 30,000 something, you will skip fallen one entirely and you will move him on to phase two uh, of his script where he uh, uh, counters all of your stuff with like hyperdrive and havoc wing and, uh, and, and things of that nature. Uh, and Possum going for it. Now, one of the things that he can do is cast Ultima uh, when you damage him when he's under 10,000 HP. Uh, but Ultima wouldn't kill him, and Possum Morpheus taking home the gold. 127, uh, 29 uh, for the final time there. Very nicely done. Uh, we'll see if we can get him in here for an interview. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get to see any of the nasty counter scripts and awful things Kefka likes to do. No, not, not at all. Uh, this was a very, very clean set of tears uh, all together. Uh, like all, all of them cooperated in some way or another, but part of that too is because uh, Possum had the tools to, uh, to, to, to appropriately manage each set of the tears and then utilize those tools to great effect. So uh, very nicely done. A, a picturesque Kefka kill, one might say. And Cyclor, meanwhile, uh, as Possum steps off, Cyclor steps on. So let's wish him the best of luck in his climb. So this brings uh, the two teams to one and one for the week, right? So we'll have to see that tiebreaker. You that is at the end of the stream. That is correct. Uh, so uh, both teams are one and one for the week. So uh, whenever Javanator and Golden Shocker do their race, um, that will determine who wins for the week overall. And like I said earlier, uh, that is going to be a race to watch. Both Jav and Golden Shocker are phenomenal racers. They have. Uh, uh, a very, very high skill ceiling, and so uh, you're not going to want to miss that one. And, and we are joined by Possum Morpheus. GG's Possum. 
Thank you, friends. Uh, GG's to Cyclor as well. Uh, always a pleasure to get to race, uh, race friends. So, I gotta ask, uh, and, and I, I, I think I know what you're gonna say. How does it feel to abandon the shock realm? Dude, that's the first and maybe only time I'll ever do it. I was like, analysis paralysis on it. I sat there like, I'm supposed to take her, right? Right? Maybe? And no? it's tough. It's and so tough. I, I thought I was going to get uh, stronger to Sword Tech 7, and I ended up like one level shy. So in retrospect, uh, the play was dumping Strago, but how do you dump a Sword Tech-er? Like, Sword Tech's so good, but Shock is so good. I just feel like if you get Sword Tech 7, it's better. But maybe some foresight would have been that Shock gives me AoE, and my other AoE was Fixed Ice, which is not great AoE. So, I don't know. It was really weird. Because then, like, also Stunner is AoE. I, I don't know. I, I still don't know what was correct. It was analysis paralysis because of the amount of power. But... Like, I don't know. It was just, it was very weird. Very weird seed. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we noticed was just how generous the seed was at the start. Because you you and Cyclor both, like, you found the Illuminas on the ship, which is fantastic, by the way. Uh, yeah, I was I, looking for warp stones for Gogo's check, and it was like, oh. Huh. <laughs> well, okay, who can use? Oh, no one can use them. Okay. Wait, there was a merit award in Zen, and I just shopped it. Okay, hold on. The seed's trolling me, right? Now I need a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was actually, the theme of the seed, was I need a billion dollars, and I never had it. Thankfully, it, Megalix herself for a lot. <laughs> yeah. How many did you sell? <laughs> uh, three or four? I think it was like three, yeah. Dude. Um, and, and elixirs and other, yeah, it was a mess. You still yeah. had what you needed for your uh, final Kafka, though, and that's all that matters. Uh, but you mentioned Sword Tech earlier, uh, and actually that kind of brings me to my next question. Uh, you had the egg. You found the egg in, was that Returner's Hideout? Mm -hmm. So did you ever consider moving the egg onto Strago to get him, like, to assure that you get him to Sword Tech 7? I thought I was naturally going to get there and not have okay. to worry about it. Uh, and that was just uh, a misjudgment on my part. I thought with the encounters that I had taken, especially the er like I, I potentially could have done it early, right? And put it for the, uh, I think it was the Evil Oscars and the Behemoths or whatever it was. Or Evil oh, Oscar Brontor, excuse yeah. me. So like, I guess I could have put it on there and gotten the earlier levels that way. But I was just thinking with all those extra encounters I was taking, surely I'll get there and send them up the middle and it'll be no problem. And I think the biggest thing was I just, I only took one dragon and normally I take like three to four. And so I right. think that's where my miscalculation came in was I, I never did the Zozo uh, out of logic check and I didn't do Ancient Castle out of logic. Uh, I never went up a World of Ruin Narsh and Fanatic's Tower was not happening with this party. So like for me, I, I think my my misestimation was just based on the lack of dragons I would normally do. Well, like, even even without the dragons, normally the scaling is such that um, you, you can pretty comfortably get into the mid-40s on most seeds, and yeah, I, I think it was more unfortunate than anything that there just yeah. wasn't quite enough experience this I, seed to, to get there. I think the other thing is that was the best burning house of my life, and I missed XP because of it. And that may have also caused a problem, because I think I skipped five or six encounters in there, which the is absolutely sick. Room but was yeah, that was amazing. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was so cool. That's brilliant. That was the best I've done by far. Uh, so, you know, better lucky than good. But again, that costs the XP part of it. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to take that check, part of it is for XP. Well, unless you're just hunting characters, and you can zoom right through it and then reset if it's not. So I think I reset out of like four checks at the end, just character hunting. Um, I, I guess I should have just gone in there and stuck in there instead of going back to Collapsing House and being like, okay, that's not a character. And I don't know. Just, you know, second guessing myself, but overall still, like, it's sub 130 and I'm thrilled with that. 
No, it was a great time, I think. Uh, and for what it's worth, how many encounters did you take? I saw, I remember you took the naughty. And two. the naughty I think I took really... the first two. That's, yeah. So you would have seen the, uh, like, the Buffalax Delta Bug, which. Yeah, I uh, saw Buffalax Delta Bug, which is not a great encounter, and then the naughty, which is, like, whatever. And then I never saw another encounter. Right. Uh, the, the Buffalax Delta Bug was, like, the best thing that you were going to find in there. And that's mm. worth. At your scaling around 4K experience a pop. So, like, not awful, but... I was surprised with the Evil Oscars and the Brawn Tours, and then also the random Scullion going up to, uh, to <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Floating Continent, Floating but Continent, that wasn't yeah. enough. Like, when I saw that, it was like, oh, great, I hate this enemy because of reasons. Uh, but <laughs> um, that's a great XP encounter. It was like eight or 9,000 XP, which is more yeah, than a boss at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you had gotten that, like, as your first and third encounter instead of your second, you would have been Might fine. have got there, yeah. I mean, um, it's still, like, I still had Stunner, which gave me stop for Tier 2, um, which wasn't the worst. And then uh, Shrago had learned Cure 3 anyway, so he just kind of turned into the healer, and that was that. Uh, which was fine. I had, you know, Cure 3, it's good, no reflect. It's always good to have a utility character. Don't need Mega Elixirs when you got Cure 3. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, I, I think that that's all of the questions that I had. Scar, what do you got for Possum? Uh, you know, I don't got much, because uh, you covered the bit about the merit reward that I was thinking about. Think yeah, that keep... was just so weird. Like, oh, yeah. Illuminus, yay, oh, no one can use them. Oh, merit award, yay, uh, now what do I do? And, like, maybe later on, I should have looked and seen if other characters could naturally equip Illuminus. Like, I know that um, picking up the late Celis, I think that's in her natural equip pool. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It is. It is. Um, it is? Okay. So, like, maybe I should have looked into doing that. But I didn't have money for more Illuminas, so maybe it wouldn't have mattered. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot to optimize there, but on the fly, it's very hard. There's a lot of analysis paralysis in that one for me. And I didn't for want sure. to be stuck in my menu forever. Yeah, no, I would have been the same. That was brilliantly run. Yeah, one of the things that Scar said at the start was that this is actually really scary because of just the sheer amount of stuff that you got, and it, like it's on a pretty common loot path, right? So you know that the other runner is likely to get it too. The other problem was I sold an offering in an economizer early to buy the merit award in the Illumina, and then there's fixed dice that show up, and not one but two trade-ins in the Coliseum. And I was like, I, Illumina is really cool, but like, wouldn't Fixed Ice Offering have been stronger out the gate? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> like, I, with, with and fixed my dice rolls were great throughout the, the seed until like the very end, but that was fine. For the most part, they were <laughs> phenomenal. You, yeah. you, you took the, the Knuckly Kong school. Of, I did of appreciate dice. Knuckly. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it, it's tough to say, right? Because Octo or uh, Quad Fixed Dice is like it's real damage, but it's just inconsistent when compared to Illumina well, Swings. And it could have been Octo because with I think I with had the Genji Glove. I had the Genji Glove, uh, and so like it could have been just Quad Dice. It's slow, but it's probably killing everything. And the Illumina until you get you know level twenty twenty five. I don't think it's as good as that variable just you know, kind of flex damage of the dice. So I, I just, yeah, I still don't know. It was a very weird one. Like I, the Illuminas might've been a trap as weird as, as that is, but it seems to have worked out. So <laughs> I can't complain. Yeah. Uh, well, at any rate, uh, once again, congratulations on your first place finish. Uh, do you have any final memes to share with us before we let you go? I just want to thank everyone in the Worlds Collide community for being uh, so welcoming to not only myself, but a lot of other runners who are, uh, you know, starting to double up on the randomizers or triple up on the randomizers we play. Uh, a lot of folks coming over from the Free Enterprise community. So, you know, just a huge thank you to everyone welcoming us in. Uh, you know, all the events that are running, the Warring Triads, the uh, the Chupon Championship, uh, you know, having team names that can be said over, a, you know, over to a wider audience <laughs> that was good. Uh, but, you know, just in general, appreciate everyone being so welcoming and, and so knowledgeable and willing to share that knowledge. So just appreciate everyone. And thank you, Speed Gaming, for uh, for letting us play and uh, do our thing on here. And uh, thank you, Gar and Scar. 
or uh, Scar or Garcerer, whatever we're going to call y'all, uh, for doing comps, uh, Joker for tracking, and Schwanz for restreaming. So just appreciate everyone behind the scenes, too. I hope y'all have a great night. Thank you so much. And, uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. GG's again to Cycler. Yeah, and speaking of GG's, how about the crack panel for Cyclor? Yeah, he it looks like he like ran out of darts midway. He oh, it looks like it was a tough fight, a tight fight. I was enthralled. Yeah, uh, I I only got bits and pieces of the of the climb as I uh, uh, as I was interviewing uh, Possum there, but uh, from what I saw, yeah, like he, he seemed to be doing very well. If he ran out of darts, then. Uh, he routed the seed perfectly, but uh, uh, let's see if we can't get him in here for an interview. Yeah, I think he was like throwing his junk weapons at Final Kefka. It was, it was pretty nice to watch. <laughs> Use what you got, right? Uh, there's, yeah, there's, like uh, uh, Thunderblade. Uh, this, uh, that. There's a uh, something to be said for being resourceful uh, for Worlds Collide. And we are joined by Cycler. GG's. Woohoo, GG's. Way to go, Possum. So yeah, tell tell us how how you feel that seed went. Uh like how did you feel about all the offense there? Y you know, I um I wasn't think I I figured sure we'll check the airship shop to see if there's uh warp stones, because I'll probably want those. I got go go. And then there's alumina. And then nobody could use alumina, and I'm like, buying one anyway, don't care. And normally, I would say that that's like a really good play, right? Because uh, there's four characters in the vanilla game that are able to equip it, and you need seven, so there's a good chance you'll run into one of them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because the T's holding on to it for that long without a user. Now, uh, I do want to say that you checked, uh, what was that, World of Balance Zen, and there was the Relic Shop where they saw the, the, uh, the Merit Award. You know, now that you mentioned that, that sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> uh, well, so Possum actually did the exact same thing that you did. Uh, he checked the the airship shop for warp stones, found the Illuminas, but he 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 got the uh, the merit award at the end of that, and so was able to make use of that a, a little bit earlier. Good move. Good move. Yep, the uh, the merit award to me has always been one of those items. If I find it, it's worth gill, and that's it. <laughs> I, and I said exactly the same thing. I I very rarely use a merit award for its intended purpose. It, it's better as gold. Yeah. yeah so. Oh well. <laughs> um. But, uh, otherwise, you know, uh, you, like you found the egg. You found the uh, uh. There, there were the fixed ice in the Colosseum. Um. That was tempting. I almost went for those, but I in Seeds Pass, I've gotten over-reliant on fixed dice, especially when I start with Offering. And some of my practice seeds, I've had, I had dice rolls that never got over 2,000 damage, so it's like, I, I don't need to get myself in that trap. I have an Illumina. I'm bound to find somebody who can use it. Maybe I find an Atma weapon I got the Offering. And then when I saw the Atma for sale and Sabin can use it, then I really started doing the mental calculations. Do I bring him back in? XPA, you can try to boost that up and Thankfully, well, I found Celeste, and I didn't have to think anymore. Yeah, um, and well, it's rough too because the the fixed ice it's a real weapon, right? And yeah. with the offering, like you can do phenomenal damage, and Tons you can also stuff. do you can, like a couple hundred. <laughs> you, you can do so much with it, but with the Illumina in my pocket, it's like that's not the you know. If I didn't, if I never saw the Illumina, I probably would have grabbed them, and I probably would have you know rolled the dice the entire seed, and you know probably screen on my computer more on bad rolls <laughs> but um, you know you can't predict that you can't predict what the seeds are going to give you you just got to take the information and you know hope for the best if anything yeah absolutely um that being said you you still had like a, a heck of a time coming in like both you and possum actually went into kt at basically exactly the same time you were no more than like five seconds apart from each other nice so that, yeah. like, that was really, really cool to see. The coin toss of what side to put Shadow on with the stunner, that was my that was the hardest decision I had. It's like, uh, I, I don't care who's in the middle, Celeste mid middle, two Illuminas, that, whatever that is, it's dead. It's like, if Poltergeist is on either side and Shadow's not there, it's going to be a slow grind, and 
I thought about resetting. I said that save slot put aside just to be able to do that, but it's like we got through Doom so quick. I thought, okay, we can we can do Poltergeist fast enough, and I don't know. <laughs> okay, and I, I was actually going to ask you next. Like, did you consider uh, resetting uh, just just to get through that Poltergeist fight a little? More yeah, that, that was um, if that last attempt hadn't gone so well. But then also at the start of that last attempt, I had to grab my phone, and it's like, oh. Is po- and I had to ask myself the question, does Poltergeist absorb Pearl? Because I got that Pearl rod sitting right there, and then, no, oh, no, he gets hurt by it. And I'm like, I could have used that two fights ago. <laughs> but You, you live to learn, right? Yeah, 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 it's one of those things I never remember at the time because it never comes up so situationally, and then gets you every now and then. So kids, remember, spicy chickens don't like Pearl. It's true. Uh, I, I think that's all the questions I got. Scarcer, what do you got for Cyclore? Uh, no, I think you covered everything again. It's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's that's fine. Uh, just once again, GGS and um. Oh d- wait, wait, I do have a question. Did you run out of darts on Final Kafka? Uh, I ran. I certainly got. I had water skeins left, and I think a mithril knife. <laughs> <laughs> Planned. So it was like, the last dart. Calculated. Yeah. <laughs> that was lucky brilliant. On that one. The part that kicked me the most is I remember I saw bolt edges for sale in some shop, and then as soon as I found Mog with Row, couldn't remember where it was. It was right there. It was. It was. Right it, it was yeah. It was, uh, that, it was that shop where you were standing was, right next to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, because like you check the shop and then you grab Mog, and then it's like, oh, he's got Throw. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, what can we do with this? So many things. Ooh, I have an Illumina. Maybe I'll throw that. <laughs> I wouldn't throw an Illumina. <laughs> Expensive tart. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, if I got to Kefka without a Lumina user, it's going. Yeah. You're not wrong. What, <laughs> what a, what, go, fire sale. And what a heck of a seed that would be, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, don't want to keep you too long, Cyclor. Uh, you have any final memes you want to share with all of us? Oh, man. This was a. Uh... This was. When I saw Possums win, I thought, oh, he bet good on the Poltergeist, on the. Got, uh, the statues fight he did good there but i think for our division that brings uh, our teams to a 1-1 for the week so i have to wait till saturday for my third member um to do their race and see how this whole week pans out and oh man it's just me uh anticipation all week long now gotta get yeah. those points uh so um you've got uh javinator left on your team to go and then uh team bahamut has uh, Golden Shocker, and both of them, uh, I mean, phenomenal racers. Uh, yeah. I, I cannot keep saying this enough. You are going to want to watch that. It's going to be really, really cool. And it's going to be tight, and oh, go Team Phoenix. We have to rise up from our ashes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Cyclore. Congratulations again uh, for, for sticking it out, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Hey, thank you much. And uh, I do believe that is going to do it for us here on Speed Gaming. I want to thank Speed Gaming for hosting us, as always. It is uh, a pleasure. I want to thank both of our runners, Possum Morpheus and Cyclor, for putting on a fantastic show. And I encourage you all to give them a follow if you're not already following them, because uh, both of them are also excellent runners. And uh, you're not going to want to miss what they have in store for you. Uh, big shout outs to Scarcerer, my co-commentator. Thank you so much for being awesome in the booth with me. Uh, Joker Mage 2, thank you so much for pushing the buttons. And of course, the Schwantz27 for doing the restreaming and uh, a lot of the behind the scenes work with Speed Gaming. Couldn't do it without you. And a, and a big shout out to Gar. Thank you for uh, carrying me on my first FF6 comms. This has been wonderful. Oh, I didn't realize this was your first. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, I, I, I'm glad to have been been your first. I'm sorry that kind of sounded weird, but uh, uh, seriously, no, I, I I really appreciate it. You did fantastic, and uh, all of you at home, uh, give Scarcer a follow. Uh, heck, give the entire restream team a follow. Uh, we deserve it, and I'm not even going to be humble this time. I deserve your follow. Give it to me. 
I'm just kidding. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. He's not oh. you, deserve, you deserve to <laughs> see more of Gar. He's great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, seriously, seriously. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you will catch us next time when we restream. Uh, take care, everyone, and have a good night.